Welcome to August Legal Challenge. This problem is called Array of Doubled Pairs. Given an integer array of even length r, return true if it is possible to reorder r such that r 2 times i plus 1 is equal to 2 times r 2 times i. Uh, for every 0 less or equal to i less than length of r divided by 2 or false otherwise. Yeah, so they word that very strangely, but essentially what we're trying to do is pair each one of these numbers um, to another number inside of our array, make sure it's unique, and make sure that the number is double it. So here we can see negative 2, we can map that to negative 4, and 2 here, we can map that to 4. And knowing that, we can reorder it uh, in, in two ways here, and that's going to give us our answer. So really, how we order it doesn't matter so much. It's really about these forming these pairs, right? So forget about how it needs to be ordered and that 2 to the i plus 1, whatever, like, that just is more confusing than it's worth. What we want to do is move through our array and see if we could find uh, another number that's going to be double it. Yeah, so certainly we could think about ways of popping numbers off and, and, and doing this whole nested loop thing, but I think we want to go try greedy. And what we might have to do then is just say that for instance, these weren't negative at first. What we would do, right, let's say we sorted it into 2, 2, 4, 4. We could just move through our array. We'll have some sort of counter object that counts up how many 2s we have. So 2, we have 2 of those, and 4, we have 2 of those, right? And what we'll do is check to see, okay, for this number here, starting with the lowest, do we have the 4 inside of our counter object? And if we do, we'll just decrease that by 1, and we'll also decrease this by 1. Now we'll move on to 2 here, and we'll see that, okay, we have 2 here, so we'll decrease that to 0, and we'll decrease, we have 4 in there, and decrease that to 0 as well. As soon as we, uh, if we find that the number just doesn't exist at all, like at this point, we can just continue it. So really, uh, what matters here is say that we had a 4 instead, uh, and we had like 3 4s and 1 2, we can start here and see, okay, we have a 2, so we'll decrease that, but once we uh, decrease 4, goes to 3, I'm sorry, goes to 2, then we go here, okay, this decreases to 1. But then we want to look for an 8, that's not there, right? So we have to return a false at that point, because we couldn't find it. Uh, if we do come to a point and we see that uh, the 2x isn't in here either, that also is a false as well, because, uh, because that's just the way it works. But the key then is to figure out how we can sort it correctly. Uh, because we have to keep in mind we have negatives here, right? And one of the things you'll notice is when you sort it like this, we want it sorted in a way that we can map, um, like, the negative numbers. We want it to be sorted in ascending order. I'm sorry, descending, no? Yeah, we want, we want it to be sorted in descending order. And the positive numbers, we want them to be sorted in ascending order. And that way we can make sure that we're never going to find the bigger one first. Uh, so that's a little bit confusing, but let's see if we could figure out how to do that. What we'll do is we'll create two lists. We'll have one for the negatives and one for the positives. We'll just uh, just do this kind of straightforwardly and say, all right, for A and R, if A is less than zero, then we'll add it to our negative list. And for positive, we'll do the same thing, but we'll just say for A and R, if A is greater or equal to zero. So next, let's recreate our R, but we want to sort that in that descending, negatives in descending and positives in ascending, right? So what we'll do is say sorted of negative, uh, but we'll make this reverse. And then we'll just add the sorted of the positives. So now we have our new array and it's sorted in the way that we want. So now we just have to have our counter object, counter all the arrays and We'll move through every single one of these, 4a in uh, array. If c of a is equal to 0, then we can just continue, because uh, that should mean that we found the big ones, right? But if c of 2 times a is equal to 0, this is a big no-no. So we have to return a false immediately. Now, otherwise, we just decrease by 1, and we decrease by 1 here as well. 
And if we can get through this entire loop, we should at this point have uh, subtracted all these all the way to zero and we can just return a true at this point. All right, so let's uh, look at an example, make sure this works. I can run that. This should be false and this should be true and it is. So let's go ahead and submit this. And there we go, accepted. Yeah, so time complexity wise, it's going to be n log n, even though it looks a bit bigger. I, I, I'm pretty sure it ends up becoming n log n, but we do have O of n space for our counter object. Now you actually could just not even do this whole thing. You can just um, convert all the negative numbers to positive and it still works. But that surprised me because uh, I, I wasn't sure why that is fine, but I guess that works too. Uh, I just did this. This is how I did it at first. So um, I just want to show my approach. Um, and that would really be it. I, I think the big key here is just figuring out, yeah, we're not really trying to figure out the order necessarily. We're just trying to map each one of these numbers to another uh, and only using it once. That's the key, right? Because we can have two, four, 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 and we don't want to, we don't want to remap the two to like all the other fours or whatever. So, uh, all right. I, I think that's about it. Hopefully that helps. And thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.